Hello and welcome to Indiality. Today I'm going to present you the top 5 indie games released in January 2023. Please keep in mind that this is my subjective opinion and the games are not arranged in any particular order. Enjoy! A Space for the Unbound A Space for the Unbound is a side-scrolling adventure game with puzzles. It's a story-driven game with very memorable characters and well-written storyline. The game tells the tale of Atma and Raya, high school students growing up in the late 90s in Indonesia. Atma owns a magical book which allows him to dive into people's heart and explore their minds. The inside of each character's mind represents their deepest fears and passions. This superpower allows Atma to fix people's problems, which also causes us to progress through the game. Using this power gives us a feeling that we can impact other people's lives in a positive way. Although the first puzzles might seem trivial, you should treat them as a tutorial as the difficulty increases throughout the game. A Space for the Unbound often surprises us with original puzzles and mind-blowing plot twists. The game contains a lot of both joyful and sad moments. The way our characters were written causes us to get attached to them and to actually care about what is going to happen to them. Something that I really want to underline is the visual aspect of the game. It is beautifully animated, has a very nostalgic feel to it, and encourages the player to just explore the map and admire the views. It is one of the games that you just need to play to the end to experience this masterpiece of storytelling. Without a doubt, a space for the Unbound will stay in your head for a long time. Lone Ruin Lone Ruin is a skill-based twin-stick roguelike game with a focus on high replayability. At the beginning of each run, you get to choose between multiple starting skills, then we can pair our main skill with a secondary skill along with many other items and upgrades which all together define our strengths and weaknesses. The amount of skills allow us to create a lot of different builds which encourages us to try new combos in every run. Each skill can be upgraded in many different ways which gives us even more variety. While playing the game, I had a constant feeling that it was heavily inspired by Hades, due to many similarities, so if you are a fan of Hades, it might be a good idea to give Lone Ruin a try as well. If I had to describe this game in one word, it would be satisfaction. The game is smooth and the character's movement is very responsive to our input which combined with beautiful animations and difficult fights gives us a well-balanced mix of challenge and satisfaction. And talking about challenge, it's not an easy game. You are probably going to die a couple of times before you finally win your first run. But that's what we love about roguelikes, isn't it? There isn't much story to the game, I'd rather say it's all about testing our skills and patience. The game's replayability comes from the fact that losing is always caused by our own mistakes, which motivates us to try again and eliminate those mistakes, maybe with a different build or strategy. The game still has a lot of room for improvement, but it is already fun in its current state. Is it going to become my favorite roguelike? Probably no. Is it fun and worth a shot? Absolutely. Farlanders Farlanders is a retro-inspired turn-based city builder in which you have to build and manage your colony on Mars. Use specialized tools to terraform the planet, build residential areas for your workers, and gather various resources to expand your colony. It is quite a difficult game as it regularly requires you to make the right decisions. Every turn you need to decide what is the best way to spend your resources and which tiles you want to terraform using the innovative puzzle-like terraforming system. 
There are specific combinations of tiles that can create new objects when paired properly. Luckily enough, you don't need to memorize all the combos, as the entire list is always available in the manual. Like almost every base builder, the game also contains a technology tree, which allows you to discover new buildings and expand your colony. If you ever run out of important resources, fear not, you don't need to restart the game just yet. There is a trading system which allows you to buy specific resources to make sure your mission on Mars is successful. At the current stage of the game, you can choose between two game modes, campaign and free play, but there are more to come such as daily challenges and sandbox. Each game you play feels completely different as the maps are generated procedurally with the option to adjust the difficulty to your likings. If you are into strategy games or base building simulators, make sure to give this one a try. Inculinati Inculinati is a turn-based strategy game based on medieval manuscripts. You play as a hero who can spawn soldiers onto the battlefield by drawing them. You are limited only by the amount of your ink, which you can collect at the end of each turn. You start your journey with three different soldiers and then grow your arsenal as you progress through the game. During your adventure, you are going to encounter multiple events that will allow you to recruit new units, heal your inculinati, get certain buffs and upgrades and more. The game has a very strategic aspect to it and requires you to find the right tactic to beat certain levels. There are many unique mechanics to learn and mastering each of them will highly increase your chances of winning. Something that absolutely has to be mentioned is the sense of humor in the game as besides being a difficult strategy game, it will also bring a smile to your face every now and then. At the beginning of each run, you can customize your character and select your loadout, including your army and your hero's skills. The game also has a roguelike aspect to it. After every run, you get experience points to unlock new stuff to make your future runs easier. Inculinati introduces a unique mechanic called boredom. Your hero gets bored of drawing the same units over and over again and increases their play cost to prevent you from using the same units in every fight. This mechanic brings some more variety to the game as we can't just stick to the same group of units and use the exact same army throughout the entire run. During your run you are also going to encounter boss fights. Each boss fight brings something new to the battlefield and makes the battle more unique. After spending some time in the game I have to compliment its balance. It feels like the devs spent a lot of time making sure that each unit is viable and there are no overpowered units that make others look less useful. I had an absolute blast playing Kulinati and I'm looking forward for the future updates. Children of Silent Town Children of Silent Town is a lovely point-and-click adventure game that tells the story of a girl named Lucy who grew up in a village surrounded by a forest inhabited by mysterious monsters. For an unknown reason, people keep disappearing from the village, but it seems like Lucy is the only one who cares about it. Everyone else either got used to it or is too scared to investigate the problem. Our main character Lucy has finally decided that she is ready to take charge of it and solve the mystery of Silent Town. I cannot praise the audiovisual aspect of the game enough. The charm to the art style and music is irresistible, but the game also has much more to offer. During your journey, you are going to encounter many puzzles which will get more difficult with time, and most importantly, they always feel both challenging and rewarding. Other than puzzles, the game also contains a lot of collectibles to find, which I'm sure many of you will highly appreciate. Children of Silent Town is a very immersive game. 
the story, the satisfaction after solving each puzzle, the brilliant music and gorgeous art style make it hard to stop playing the game as you will constantly want more. As the story develops, we get to learn more and more about all the mysterious occurrences in the village as the story is really well written. There is also a dark side to this game, as from time to time the visuals change from bright and colorful to dark and creepy. Something I also really appreciate is that you can play the game using only your mouse, which is very comfortable. Personally, I have to admit that Children of Silent Town was my favorite indie game of January and I can't recommend it enough. If you haven't yet, go and play it yourself, you will not be disappointed.